Hello, Brother Monroe here. Welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. And today, a uh, request sent in live on Twitch by Thread of Length. Thank you very much. Um, and it is to try out a 12 inch style large cruiser, cruiser killer, super cruiser, whatever you want to call them, um, of Italian make against an Austro Hungarian cruiser squadron. So that's what we're going to try and uh, do today. So, the large cruiser, what an interesting ship. The Regina. Um, got s towers. Are s this this little weird little extra thing in the middle is really interesting. Um, it's really unusual to see it this late as well. Look at all that superstructure. Okay. Twelve. Uh, no, 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 no. I know what we're gonna do. I'll still do an Italian one, but I'm not using that rubbish. Right, where is it? There it is. <laughs> no, I'm not using those disgusting things. <laughs> right, main guns, 12. There we go. Um, I could yeah, go for a four gun setup. Uh, another advantage of going British, of course, is that I can put guns on top of the uh, the main guns. At what? Including quad guns? Well, that's interesting. Mind you, I am fighting cruisers, so I might want to see if I can get something bigger, but that's that's very curious. <laughs> um, now, the disadvantage of putting the gun on top of this gun is this one has to be a bit further forward. It won't tuck under like that. Yep, don't know. <laughs> don't know why, but yeah, we got French quad guns. Way. <laughs> Does that mean we get the French quad fours? Oh, we do. Oh, hello. Lovely. Oh, yeah, I should get a funnel, right? Um, 52. Okay, we're talking a single funnel in. Hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's there that might be a bug. It's because I'm using unlock and I'm using um British guns. Well, I'm, I'm playing as Britain, but I'm using an Italian hull. But I appear to have the French quad guns. Maybe when you go unlock, all you get access to the quad guns. Um, could could be that. Yeah, the balcony below the boat deck. You mean this this bit? Yeah, I'm thinking maybe putting some secondaries on there. Again, we are fighting cruisers. So four inch guns might do some damage to the light cruisers, but I'm actually thinking six inch guns could potentially be pretty nice. Um, yeah, one there, and I want one right there. So yeah, we've got, they're facing the wrong way, but never mind. So we've got four twin six inch each side as well. I think that works. Um, is there any other places I can shove guns? Really? Really? There? Eh, well, you do you, game. Seems uh, totally sensible to me. <laughs> secondary barbettes. Yeah, I could do. But uh, I think I have enough secondary weapons. Probably. <laughs> this is a sexy ship. She is a sexy ship. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, we've got a bit of a four-way offset going on. Which, um... Oops. 
shouldn't be too much of a problem to fix. Yeah, there we go. Um, I suppose I should build out the rest of the ship. Um, diesel oil. Let's go for balanced boilers. Don't need to go quite that fast. Thirty knots. Perfectly acceptable. Okay, uh, turbo electric drive and this, that, these things. All the good stuff. Don't range. Hmm. Bulkheads. Could. Hmm. Bulkheads and propellant are both interesting options. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to go for high TNT for that dual purpose nature. It does mean that my flat. Oh, 2%. 2% is okay. Um, and that leaves plenty of room for armor. 12, 6, 6, 3. This battleship kind of standard quality. Six, six, twelve. Oh, oh, hello. Um, all right. Now, just, just very quickly, do not let me launch the ship without changing this. Let's say that they had a super heavy eleven inch or twelve inch um, tube powder guns. What can they go through? Yeah, if we're, if we're rocking like 15, 16 inches of armor on the belt, it's pretty much impenetrable. Hell, our six inch deck is pretty much impenetrable already. Uh, torpedo protection? Yep. Already got it. We've already got all the torpedo protection. So, <laughs> come on. You can't tell me we can... Oh, my word. Yeah, that's perfectly fair. 16-8. <laughs> can you still fix 16 on the turret? No, didn't think so. Go for a 15... 7.5, though. Uh, and, oh, no, 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 no. We can fit... We've got about 70 tons or so. I just shove it in the tower. That's fine. There we go. <laughs> no, Fossil. I'm not using 14 inch guns because the whole point was that I used 12 inch guns, which lets me get the Mark 5s, which lets me get the, put the guns on top. I'm not building a 14 inch battle cruiser today. I've done that before. 16 inch belt is not a cruiser, not in anyone's estimation. Well, meh. <laughs> the invincible it is. <laughs> Let's go. I mean, just because cruisers didn't normally come with 16 inch belt guns doesn't mean that they shouldn't have. Right. Enemy cruiser squadron. Let's go. Should have tried harder. I know. Our accuracy is terrible to begin with. Uh, can you target the heavy, please? There we go. 1.6%. As we uh, close the distance. Interesting to see how she does as a cruiser killer. I have done. Um, I have looked at the concept of large cruisers before. I am. I am a fan. Like, they definitely serve an interesting niche of being able to um, like, wipe the floor with enemy cruisers. Um, but uh, obviously if you came up against anything bigger than a cruiser, 
like you came up against a true battle cruiser or a battleship, uh, she's def definitely gonna definitely gonna make find things difficult. Hello there, Toby. How are you doing, sir? Um, so uh, I'm trying out a 12-inch armed super cruiser. Although what's actually appeared is a bit of an abomination <laughs> because it's um, an Italian hull with British guns, Mark V's, which means I can put guns on top of them, and uh, I appear to be able to put French quad guns on, which seems perfectly fair. Oh, six inch guns rotating to get in position. These, these ones should be able to find. That one's just returning through the superstructure, which is in fact all of them. So I went Italy uh, initially, saw because I wanted to use this hull, and then because the Italian tw 12 inch guns are those really horrible looking ones, um, I'm just going to do a turn because they probably fired torpedoes at me by now. Um, so I went British, unlock all, and I picked the Italian. I'm not certain, but I think if the moment if you're on unlock all, you get access to the French quad guns. Because France isn't involved in this at all. <laughs> the Washington Naval Treaty. That's actually interesting. So, obviously you can argue about standard displacement and lying and all the rest of it, but she is 36,000 tons standard displacement. Pretty much, because um, this because Ultimate Admiral uses full load displacement, not standard. So she would definitely fit under the thirty-six thousand ton limit. Um, she doesn't have guns that exceed uh, the fourteen-inch limit um, that was introduced later, anyway, but. Yeah, so she doesn't have guns that are on a, not allowed. She's we we've called her a battle cruiser, which means that she's one of our capital ship allowance ships. Um, she'd be fine under the naval treaty, as far as I can work out. Again, I'm not a naval historian by any means, but um, yeah, she's a totally legitimate ship. Totally legitimate. <laughs> Doesn't break any. Oh, there we go. There's the first big hit. Doesn't break any rules. Can we get an ID, please? Yes. Okay. So we have the. She just fired. The Maros. Seven inch guns, spin on bulkheads. Probably turning in. Well, I mean, it's a battle cruiser, um, but no, you couldn't call it a cruiser under the terms of the treaty because she's three times bigger and uses guns that are much larger. Because I think the limit for cruisers was eight. Um, so yeah, she's she's definitely not a cruiser, but she is a battle cruiser. So it depends whether you would want to use one of your capital ship allowances on a ship like this. You could argue that it's not a good spend. But then again, she just wiped out that light cruiser pretty quick. I don't know, I can see a use for this, this type of ship. Be a horrendous thing. Um, so perhaps not for the British but for another nation that's fighting the British and their convoys and things she just fired as well and it gets immediately oh just wrecked look at that, five hits three from the 12 inch guns even and she's just dead yikes yeah convoy raider I mean if this thing existed, like if, if you were Japan or Germany or Italy or whoever, and you had one of these 
convoys would have to be escorted by a battleship. Like, you would have to have battleships with 15 inch guns or bigger um, protecting your um, protecting your convoys because light cruisers clearly are not enough. Destroyers certainly won't be. Um, and uh, I don't think heavy cruisers will either. So you'd have to use very, very high-end ships to protect your convoy. Which, of course, they did end up having to do because of the threat of things like the um, Graf Spay and things like that. But, yeah. Nasty, 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 nasty thing. Well, she's not small by the standards. I mean, she's she is a battle cruiser. Like, or you could call her a fast battleship, I guess, uh, given her armor. But I'd say because of her slightly weedy 12-inch guns, which are weedy against other battleships, but not against cruisers. So Germans here, sorry, the Austrians, not the Germans, have nine-inch guns and 18,000 tons of displacement on their heavy cruisers, so these are naughty, naughty, naughty cruisers that are banned under the treaty, and we, we, we're we fine. It's all good. How much do their cruisers cost? 30, what, 40 million? And this thing costs 66. Okay, that is very interesting. So, these three ships alone... I annoyingly didn't check how much the light cruisers were. These three ships represent an investment on behalf of the Austro-Hungarians of 120 million dollars we could buy nearly two of these ships for that and we'll just look at this go to town they do have torpedo launchers so we'll have to be slightly careful and just not waffle on Uh, uh, they have spoken about treaties in the campaign, yes. So this might actually be a factor that comes up where they said that losing a war or having a major war involving lots of ships in the campaign might result in some form of treaty system showing, oh, no, I messed that up. Oh, no, I didn't. Um, so, yeah, um, they're, they're, that might actually be in um, in the game. Um, obviously, we don't know anything about the campaign yet, but they did make noises about the treaty systems. Obviously, it would be dynamic, um, and I think Ultimate Avril makes the most sense at the moment where there were no treaties ever. Um, but, yes... They think there will be some form of treaty system in the game, which will be really interesting. Just now we're getting into murder in range. We get rudder damaged on the uh, Ron Bryn. A couple of flooding hits. Like these cruisers are. Uh, they have an 8 inch belt. Unusually, the game has not, like, made rubbish ones, but... The Invincible here has taken, so far, 200 hits from those heavy cruisers. 200! And she's fine. There's a bit of a dent. A bit of dent, dents and some holes that need patching up, but... Fully operational. <laughs> yeah, no. A maneuverable ship. Um, turning circle 674 meters is pretty decent um, for a ship this size. Yeah, she's, uh, she's an interesting one. And all the little guns are getting to fire now. Yay! These are uh, not working properly. I've noticed that. I they kind of get. They're still firing, but they kind of get. They kind of look a bit weird. In terms of damage from our own guns, yeah, nearly all of it from 12, 12 inch guns. Absolutely no way these heavy cruisers can deal with that 
I mean, these things will go through that 8-inch belt at any range they're going to hit the belt, like that armour offers, even though it's quite heavy for a cruiser, offers zero protection. Zero. Yeah, Aust the Austro-Hungarian AI does tend to be okay. It's less swingy than in other nations. Or so it seems. Wait, I'm on real time. That's fine. Uh, actually, 80%. Now these have maximum bulk kits, so they're not dying immediately. 100%. There's catastrophic damage. Damage this torpedo launcher. Take down. Like these are tough cruisers. Nine inch guns as well, which is pretty nice. They're just uh, really not meant to take on ships like this. Hard starboard, please. Yeah, I know, 83% accuracy is insane. 100% accuracy, that's what I like, okay. Grombrin finally goes down. Uh, I think next we're on to the Budapest. Three hits right out the gate, two flooding hits. Nope, I was not kidding about the cruiser killer aspect. <laughs> really, really dangerous ships. Um, Another flooding hit. It's only because these guys have torpedoes, which I just noticed they find, and that I'm not able to close in and absolutely murder them. Oh, they both find their torpedoes. And again, because the ship is fast, like. She, and she doesn't have no ability to see torpedoes. No, we're only running a hydrophone, but it's good enough. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, if being a really, really important word, because, you know, we've taken quite a lot of hits but nothing important's gone out and that's the that's the real advantage of diesels plus all or nothing your ships will keep going like we're still doing 20 25 knots even with all this damage you see here this guy he's down to 43 percent and all of his engines are out because our guns are able to like go deep inside the ship and cause damage. Hundred percent accuracy. Still like four kilometers away. Yeah, down goes the Budapest. You know, their only chance now is if they're able to reach reload those torpedoes. Oh yeah, they're gonna run out of their ammunition. Oh a flash fire. <laughs> Eventually. Like, they were down to 48 shells left. They've hit us with those 9-inch guns 350-odd times now. 350 times. Which is a lot more than we've scored. We've only scored 175 hits total throughout the battle. Just, just watch. Like, this is a, yeah, 4 kilometer in well, 3, 4 kilometers engagement. His accuracy, 50, mine, 100. Look, even the secondaries have crazy high accuracy.
They could. So if, they, if these torpedoes reload, they could fire them. 20, they're 24 inch torpedoes. Admittedly, they're fast ones. So it is, it is dangerous for us to be this close. Of course, their torpedo launcher should be splinters by now, which is something I've complained about before. But yeah, they're um, struggling. Look at the AI real. Look, you look away for two seconds and it's like, yeah, yeah, I know our reload time is 750 seconds, but screw that. We'll just reload them magically because we need them. Swap in the six for fives, try and bring the roll down. Yeah, potentially. I just like the six inch gun. It um, really effective against light cruisers. Plus you have the nice, they're half of the main armament, half the caliber. I know that's a really stupid reason. And they're loaded. Fired. Hard to port. See, there's no way the AI should have had them reloaded in that time. No way. Yeah, also it goes 12, 6, 4, 2, and I do like that as well. All three inch guns are, can be very, very deadly. Like, see against destroyers and transports. Two, three inch guns. Oof. Oh my word. Are you actually serious? Those are fast torpedoes. Yes, I did know the instant he fired them. But still, fast torpedoes fired at three kilometers out. Nope. Now I really can chase you down. There we go. Finally killed by um, the small guns. And Invincible is fine. Yeah, she's down to about 33% structure, but no engine damage. All the guns still working. Nice. That is a nice ship. And cost effective, too. Um, killed double her, her cost in that one engagement. And she would be fixed up pretty quick. Um, no serious damage. Nice. Out of interest. Just because... Yeah, look at this! <laughs> How does this one cost $75,000 a month? And the, the battle cruiser I built yesterday, for YouTubers, or like half an hour ago, for those of you on Twitch, was 16000 I think it was missing a one. Um, yeah. Pretty nice ship. Don't know if they'll actually be useful in the campaign. But um, yeah, I, I do like the large cruiser. Really interesting ship. If it comes across her ideal prey, absolutely deadly. Uh, no, we, we took um, we took a couple of flooding hits, but it was all pumped out. Um, the float was like 95% or something like that. Yeah, just patch up the holes. Um, work out the dents. Re relay the wood <laughs> on the deck. Um, fresh coat of paint. You should be good as new. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that one. Uh, those of you on uh, YouTube. Um, and I'll see you again soon for some more Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Bye-bye. <laughs>